Next on Scripps Tech, inside the tortured mind of a hero. Coming up on a large explosion now. Can this virtual reality game technology help ease his trauma? Small arms fire, three o'clock, engaging. Then, so right now I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 107 degrees outside, and I'd like a ride to somewhere cooler. Oh, and we're in. It's air conditioned, it's got nice music. There's just one thing that will make me more comfortable. A driver, but let's see how it goes. This is Scripps Tech. A show about science by scientists. We're going to explore the intersection of hardware and humanity in a unique way. Welcome to Scripps Tech. I'm Phil Torres in San Francisco. They're all around us, men and women who fought America's wars overseas, yet returned home with emotional wounds from those battles. Next, a program that uses virtual reality video game technology to confront traumatic memory. Scripps Tech's Crystal Dilworth is a neuroscientist. She takes a look at healing the brain. The trauma of war. Returning veterans from conflicts throughout history often suffer from debilitating symptoms related to what is now known as post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. Reactions include anxiety, severe flashbacks, nightmares, anger, and tragically, sometimes suicide. Chris Merkel is a 16-year Marine veteran who served four tours of active duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. He returned home with PTSD and it took Chris years to come to terms with the condition that once overwhelmed his life. His Marines were very aggressive. We're an offensive operation. So if something were to attack us really close, our re instant reaction is to attack and push through it and be very violent. Violence actually wins the day for us. The problem is when you do come back, you might say you love your family, like, hey, I'm back, I miss you, I love you. But people know when the, it just becomes words. I always hear constantly is, you're not the same since you came back. And that's from our grandfathers, fathers, everybody, you've heard it throughout time, is they just weren't the same person that came back. And it's hard to make that adjustment. How did you know that you needed help? I didn't. Um, avoidance is the biggest thing. Um, so I, I placed everything on my anger, the traffic, family problems, um, this life, um, career, it was, basically just coming to a head of, not, of losing relationships, not connecting, and finally reaching out to the VA and asking for help. Chris suffered for over a decade before finally reaching out for help. When he did, he turned to the breakthrough treatment of psychologist Dr. Skip Rizzo of the USC Institute for Creative Technologies. He created Brave Mind, a virtual reality-based exposure therapy treatment for PTSD. What is Brave Mind? Brave Mind is an application we started developing in 2004 to address combat-related PTSD in returning service members from Iraq and Afghanistan. The process involves creating a wide range of simulations that mimic the kinds of areas in those conflicts where people had bad experiences, where they experienced trauma. And so, over the, the course of the last 15 years, it's expanded. So now we have a 14-world uh, experience. The 14 Brave Mind virtual reality worlds that Skip created reflect scenarios that are customized for individual patients. They virtually relive traumatic events with the help of a trained clinician. He showed me firsthand how it works. You start by wearing a headset that is high-res video and audio. The screen behind me is displaying exactly what I'm seeing. This being Afghanistan world, um, a marketplace area. Skip, what am I hearing? Is this authentic audio from yes. this particular location? Yeah, this is um, actually captured by an audio anthropologist who captured every kind of ambient sound you can think of. I think the visuals sort of set the stage, but the audio drives the emotion. Skip has total control over these worlds. 
He can change locations and all the elements associated with each one on his computer screen, making the scenarios as realistic as possible. So as you look around, you'll see we can adjust the time of day. Um, we can make it nighttime. We can make things like jets fly over, helicopters buzz around. And then you add an explosion somewhere. And then the crowd reaction, the baby crying. I'm not in a position right now to fully react to the event, so I'm able to be a passive observer in this world. But I think once connecting it to the physicality of actually behaving and reacting and moving within the context of this world, I, I think at some point just muscle memory or habit sort of takes over and you start to respond to these stimuli as if they're real. Well, the best evidence-based approach for treating PTSD is what we call exposure therapy or prolonged exposure. And this is part of a collection of trauma-focused approaches that don't focus on helping the person to forget or smoke a joint and forget. Um, it's about getting in the trenches and confronting and reprocessing those difficult emotional memories now. So you're trying to put the person back in that situation to activate those emotions. And you activate those emotions, and it's difficult. Hard How is that not more traumatizing? It's hard medicine for a hard problem. It definitely is. This is the hardest therapy you can do, I think. But by doing that gradually, and with the therapist there to provide support, provide empathy, you know, helping a, a patient to reframe the experience, not to erase it, we're not erasing memories. These are always gonna be bad memories, but are these memories gonna be like a leash for the rest of your life? But if you do seek that treatment, there's a really, really good chance that you can get better and your life can change. Is this worth putting myself through to be a better person, be a better family member, be a better person to society going down the road? So I chose to do it and it was one of the best things that's happened to me. When we return inside Brave Mind's virtual reality world, a Marine veteran goes back to experience the trauma he faced in Iraq and Afghanistan. Fast now we're getting close to the bridge. It's starting to take some smaller fire. Contact front, contact front. Starting, starting, starting again. Then we're diving into driverless taxis. How efficient are they? And more importantly, how safe are they on the road? Because, well, I'm in one right now. Now, Scripps Tech's neuroscientist, Crystal Dilworth, picks up the story of 16-year Marine veteran, Chris Merkel. After Chris Merkel's deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan, he returned home suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. It took multiple Brave Mind virtual reality sessions to help ease him of his suffering. With Dr. Skip Rizzo controlling his scenario at the computer, he shows us what his sessions were like and how they helped him. Okay, let me bring you back to the start point. And I believe it was early morning. Early morning, yep, really Hopefully dark. some clouds in the sky. Yep. There we go. The virtual reality scenario Chris is seeing helps trigger his memory of his actual combat experience. He fills in the details of the trauma with his narration. Step, stepping off from uh, crossing the line of departure, starting to get ready to go across the bridge, uh, looking down Starting to see everything, the holes in the bridge. Seeing some heli seeing the helicopters coming in now. They're shooting uh, the Cobras, they're shooting rockets right there. So prolonged exposure, they take one specific experience. You walk through it, you have a start point, you walk through the whole process, and you narrate it first person, real time, as it's occurring. We're starting to take some small arms fire. Contact front, contact front. Starting, starting, I'm starting to engage people up to our one o'clock. Building Bravo 4, Bravo 4. Engaging, engaging. So the day I picked was, it turned out to be a ton of really powerful emotion, con emotional connections and trauma that I experienced throughout that day, because that was one of the first big days of the war. You know, so this is the invasion of Iraq. 
You picked a day during the invasion of Iraq. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because that was one of the beginning, one of my first real prolonged firefights. It's coming up on a large explosion now. Small arms fire, three o'clock, engaging. All right. Coming through the fire now. Starting to see all the, the bodies laid out in the street. He's hit. And that's the, the end. How do you feel at this moment compared to when you first started to, to tap into this oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Even that little explosion was like a little still reactive, and it still feels a little bit there. I'm like, it doesn't, the event's always going to be there. This just right. reduces, I think, the reaction. I know it reduces the reaction to it. And it's not so visceral. It doesn't like, cause, like, uh, the anxiety doesn't cause, the hypervigilance doesn't cause anything. So it's just, I'm able to talk through the process, which was the biggest piece of the exposure therapy. How many people are going to experience PTSD are going to be able to have this type of personalized virtual reality? I think it's scalable to the whole population. Uh, the VA in the United States has recently started an initiative to bring VR across the whole VA system. And we're talking about for the full spectrum of pain or PTSD or anxiety, depression, things like that. Skip Rizzo says the standard Brave Bind exposure therapy protocol is 10 sessions, with most patients improving after seven. After the treatments, most patients continue to improve on their own. It's been so effective. He's expanded the VR treatment to help those fighting the current war in Ukraine with scenarios to help them address their own PTSD. Ukraine, this is horrific. It's a, it's a, it's a petri dish of trauma. That's what's going on over there. And I think the Ukrainian people are, you know, they, they're putting on a strong face, but the types of trauma that they've been exposed to in the course of this war, horrific. And we have Ukrainian developers that are building out the worlds that are needed. So we'll be treating patients over there with this. And I'm very excited about it. Whether at home or abroad, the battle to reduce the symptoms of those suffering from PTSD continues. And virtual reality-based exposure therapy is one more cutting-edge scientific innovation that is available now. Phil? Okay.